I want to read one scripture. You don't have to worry about standing. It's, it's rather, rather short. But it's time that we get to where we need to be with God. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with preaching revival. I, mean, I understand the whole concept behind it, but we are to be living in revival. Yes, amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto man, wants to die. But after this, the judgment. I want to speak to the born again believers this morning. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for your appointment? Oh, Jesus. This message that I'm going to preach this morning is something totally different than I've ever done. In order for it to come across, I'm going to need everybody's help. And what I mean by that is I'm going to ask you to listen closely. Mm. As little distractions as possible. You don't have to bow your head and you, and you don't have to close your eyes. But however you need to do this. But I want us to use our imagination. Imagine that you're sitting in a church like today. But this time you're not gathered for this great worship that we've already had. You're not gathered to hear a preacher preach about, you know, to get you excited. But this time you're gathered for a funeral. Can you picture what it looks like? You're, you're, you're there and you're, you're taking everything in and, and, and no doubt you see crying and no doubt you see grieving and and perhaps even shedding of tears. Then you look and you see people laughing and, and, and other things that are laughing because they're sharing the memories of the, the deceased one that's there. And you look around and you see a lot of people that are gathered that you know in memory of this person. Then you make your way to the scene and and as you sit down, others begin to make their way to the seat, and you look around, and, and you, it's packed full of people. Everybody finally gets seated, and the funeral begins, and then you look around, and you realize something very strange. You, you realize something that's very startling and staggering, and you find out this funeral is for you. Keep on imagining me with me if you can. The preacher, he begins, the funeral begins in his message and, and he tries the very best he can to paint a message of hope and a positive message about your life. And he tells some stories of your life. He shares some memories and, and then he speaks briefly of your spiritual condition. He quotes the passage in the scripture that we just read. It's a point in the man wants to die. And then to face judgment. Jesus. He points out the biblical truth that as you died, your spirit separated from your body. And all the doubts you had, all the, the questions you had, all that you lived for, nothing else mattered. And then you sit and you begin to wonder, you wonder why wasn't he saying anything better about you? Because you begin to think about funerals that you've attended and the same preacher went on and on and on about how so-and-so was a faithful church member. How they were faithful servants and how they were faithful people of character and integrity. And then you realize that maybe there really was not much to say. And you want to stand up and you want to shout, I wasn't that bad of a person, preacher. I came to church. However, the message, it continues for a little while and it finally ends. And, and then a time was given for a few friends and family members to get up and, and reminisce a little bit about your life and, and the events that you shared with them. 
And they spoke of your great personality. They spoke of how much fun you were to be around. And, and you notice that these things that people were saying about you were, were meant to be only complimentary. But now after life was over, they didn't matter all that much at all. People spoke of how hard of a worker you were and of the talents that you had, but you notice not one comment about your faith. Not one comment about your character. Not one comment about you being a good spouse or a good parent or a good child. All your life you strive so hard to impress people. All your life you, you thought you wanted people just to, to like you. So you would do anything to make a friend and friends you made. You thought it was very important to, to be good at everything. You wanted people to think that you was just a good old boy or a good old guy. You wanted people to remember your dedication to work. You, you never thought that life would come to an end so quickly. You thought you would have time later for other things, but that chance never came. And at that time, as you're sitting at your own funeral, your mind begins to be flooded with all sorts of thoughts. And unfortunately now, all sorts of regrets. You realize all that you worked so hard for now did not matter. You realize you spent far too much time on things that did not matter and far too little time on things that really did matter. You regret times you were too busy at work to see your children grow up. You regret times that you were too busy just to spend time with your spouse. You regret times uh, that, that you were so wrapped up in other things that you neglected church. You wish now that you could have served more. You wish now you could have loved more. You wish now you could have studied more. You wish now that you would have paid more attention. Now you wish that you had given more. Now, there was nothing you can do about it. Now all that was gone and, and, and quickly you learn as you watch your own funeral what was really most important. You learn quickly that if you could have written the script of your own funeral, you, it would have been much different. But wait a minute. We write the scripts to our own funeral by the life we live. But you don't like the commentary that's being given and you wish you could change some things and, and now you find the funeral begins to wind down and the, and the prayer at the chapel is, or at the church has been made and, and here come the pallbearers that go and they carry your casket out the building. The hearse takes you and drives you to the graveyard. They bring your casket and place it over the grave. And the preacher reads a few passages of scripture and he, he closes with another prayer. Then they lower your casket into the ground and, and they begin to cover it up. And, and for you, that is a very sobering scene because now this means that this, this solidifies the truth that your life is done and there's no coming back to correct mistakes. I'm talking to a born-again believer this morning. Now, if you can hold that imagination just a little bit longer, that imagination, now go with me to the judgment seat of Christ. I don't, I don't know how you would have pictured, but if your mind, if, if you could go to that scene with me right now for just a few minutes. There you stand. Nobody there at your side. The scene is not quite like anything you've ever seen before. You cannot with words describe what you're seeing. 
The place you stand is bright with light that it is different. It is more different than any light that you've ever seen before. And at that moment, you see a great white throne with someone sitting on the throne. You stand there. You, you feel totally inadequate. You feel dirty. You feel immoral for the first time in your life. You feel like you're an awful person. You feel alone. And you begin to tremble. Your voice begins to quiver. You have the anxiety. You have this anxiety and fear that, that words simply cannot explain because you know the one you look at holds your eternal destiny in their hands and that your judgment was about to be final. You realize that all you live for, all that you strive for was now totally irrelevant. All that mattered now was this one sitting above the throne and what he would say to you about your eternal destiny. And again, at this time, your mind is flooded with all sorts of thoughts and all sorts of regrets. You realize that all your labor, all that you labored for by doing your best now did not matter. You realize that you spent far too much time on things that did not matter and far little time on things that did matter. You know who you or you know who the one you are standing before is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. But you don't know him. Because you never made that real time to really speak to him. You never made you never made time to learn of him. You had planned on it someday. You thought you had more time. You thought you would get around to it as you grew older. But that time never came. So here you are standing before his throne Speechless. <coughs> there at the judgment seat, you see your life relived. You see things from a different, different perspective this time. You see of times that you hurt people. You see how the things you said made other people feel. You see those that you had not forgiven. You see all the wrongs you committed. You see the times you neglected to do what you should have done. You begin to weep uncontrollably because now more than ever you realize you were not as good of a person as you thought you were. And while standing there you begin to realize a couple things and the first thing you realize is that you wish you to have been more prepared. And as you are now asked to give a defense of the life you lived and give an account for yourself, you don't have much to say. Your resume is now shorter than what you expected. You never really thought this time would come. And besides all that, you thought that you, since you were a good person, standing before God would not be so intimidating. But you were wrong and now it was too late and you knew it. You wish you could just go back and have a second chance, but that time is not coming. You were sure that since you were such a nice person, that since you went to church on occasion, since you were so popular, that God would be impressed with your resume, he would be honored to spend eternity with you in heaven. In fact, you really never questioned it. You thought, you thought the preacher was just a little over the edge when he spoke of the judgment of God. Or when he spoke about how it is to be, to, how fearful it is to fall into the hands of a living God. Yes. You brushed the pastor off when he spoke on how life is, is a time of preparation for the life to come. 
You got right down mad with the pastor because he confronted you due to your lack of faithfulness. You thought he was unfair. You thought he was idealistic and he thought he was unreasonable. And you, But preacher, I'm a good person, you said. You thought you'd be just fine since you didn't drink, since you didn't smoke, since you didn't chew, since you didn't fornicate, since you didn't commit adultery. And you thought the preacher was lying when he spoke of the reality of hell. And then you become so afraid you begin to tremble. You thought back then, you thought back then it was only for religious nuts to live completely like he expected. You thought it was ridiculous that he expected you to be at church all the time. That he expected you to not do certain things and to be so different from the world. You started to think, what if he was right all along, but now it's too late. But now you wish you'd have been more prepared. The time at the judgment seat seemed to creep by in slow motion as thoughts these thoughts continue to fill your mind. You start to think, maybe I should have read my Bible. Maybe, you know, but I didn't think it was that important. I thought it was just another book. And you, you try to justify, but now you realize that it was not just another book. And now you look around and you see at the base of the throne a large book open. You can't exactly make out the context of the book, but you you know what it is. It's the book of life. You try to catch a peek to see if your name was written in it. You looked and, and there was. You saw your name there, but wait. But wait, it's there, but wait. You begin to scream. Why is my name marked out of the book? Why is my name scratched out? You didn't want to hear the answer that came. The answer was really simply because you lost your first love for God. Oh, but I went to church. Oh, I was a part of this and I, and I worked here and I've done that. But you did not really know him. Then you were carried away. You realized then that I should have spoke more about my faith. You recall times when you could have told people about God, but you, but you, but you didn't because you didn't think it really mattered. And all you could think is that you wish you'd have been more prepared. And the place you found yourself was nothing like you had pictured. I mean, you, you, you thought many times about life after death but this was much different than you've been taught or, th or even thought and you never expected to be so afraid and to feel so helpless and then the second thing you realize is you wish you'd have had some help right now you realize that things are not looking good for you your case isn't all that convincing and you begin to think wait a second I'm a Christian I've been baptized that should be enough but yet you're told by the one on the throne that since you had never acknowledged me before others, I was not going to acknowledge you now. So you're totally on your own. You never expected this to be the way it was. If you had, you'd have, you'd have, you would have acted and lived much differently. You wanted for many years for Jesus to be your Lord. And, and you, you, you've done all the things on the outside. But the problem was, is you never really truly made Jesus the Lord of your life. You never really truly put him first. And the whole time you stand there, your mind is now filled with I wish I would have. And I wish I had not. Then you have nothing more to say and you know what is coming next. And then you hear the words, those dreaded words that you did not want to hear the whole time. Depart from me. I never knew you. Oh, 
should not be the most important part of your life. The things you acquire in this life should not be the most important part of your life. How do you want to be remembered? I'll tell you now. I go with faithful over faithless. I go with generous over stingy. I go with compassionate over being cold and hard-hearted. I go with diligence over being lazy. I would go with being Christ-like over being worldly. I would go with being sincere over being hypocritical. The point I wanted to make clear is that when life is over, the only thing that will matter or hold any weight is how we live for God. So many people spend their lives consumed with other less important things and never, never, never take time for church or for God. In closing this morning, we have people here today of different age groups and different walks of life. We have people at different stages spiritually and, and we all have different concerns. Those that are in the teen years or, or younger probably think there's plenty of time left in life to worry about your legacy. Twenties and thirties, you're so wrapped up and probably very busy starting careers or, or families. Forties and fifties, you, 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 you're beginning to reach that peak of your uh, professional lives and, and you, you're getting ready to start enjoying the fruits of your labor and those that are in their 60s and 70s you're starting to have concern maybe of health or retirement and those that perhaps in their 80s are realizing now that eternity is no longer an ab abstract concept but a reality that's just over the horizon. From the youngest in here to the oldest, we are not promised our very next breath. Are we ready? I remember several years ago, I went to two funerals in one night. I stopped by the funeral of a lady that lived to be at a good old age of 87 years old. And all you heard was people, she had a good life. She lived a good life. And this was a good Christian lady and, and, and so forth and so on. So you, 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 I witnessed or I saw a lady that did really live a long, good life. And just an hour later, I drove down the road about five miles and I looked into the casket of a 17-year-old boy. You didn't hear the words of he lived a good life. But you heard, oh, he's gone too soon. He was just beginning life. Are you ready? Would you stand us? What can